Okay, so first we've got、um, a part two speaking practice. This topic is technology. They want you to describe a piece of technology not computer related that you like to use. This is quite mean, isn't it? Quite hard to think of something that's not computer related.、Um, but there's lots of things you could talk about, like a smartwatch,、um, a Bluetooth speaker,、um, even something you use in your kitchen, like your blender or your smoothie maker, your Nespresso coffee machine. That's technology. Um, anything like that, you could talk about. So don't panic too much. I mean, it says not computer related,、um, but as long as you're not talking about a computer, I would think that the examiner won't particularly mark you down for talking about a smartwatch. I think that would be okay.、Um, so they want you to say, "What is the technology when it was invented?" Which is quite a hard question. And again, don't worry about just taking a guess in the exam. You know, some students might see that and panic. Like oh my god, I don't know when a Bluetooth speaker was invented. It doesn't matter if you don't know. Just say a date, make a guess. I think Bluetooth speakers were invented around fifteen years ago. Something like that would be okay to say.、Um, so when you're making a guess, you can say it was around something, or use hedging language. I'm not really sure, but or maybe it was in. Maybe they were invented. In the nineteen hundreds, okay. So any kind of guess, it's the English they're more interested in rather than the facts. What do you use it for? Explain how you feel about it, which I think again is quite a sort of challenging question about how you feel about technology.、Um, so, but it's a good chance to get in some vocabulary. So I feel relaxed when I use it, or when I use my smartwatch to check how many steps I've done in a day.、Um, I feel a sense of accomplishment, or I feel really happy about looking at it at the end of the day. Or you know something like that. So it doesn't necessarily have to be like I feel a deep sense of love when I look at my smartwatch. Like it can just be something as simple as that. When I use my Nespresso machine every morning to make coffee, I really feel like I get a chance to relax and calm down and start my day right. So that's that's also relevant to talking about how you feel. Okay, so don't panic too much when you see these kind of questions. So let's see what this candidate has put. Well, I'm going to talk about autonomous vehicles as my favorite technology I like to use. I'm not sure about the exact date of、uh, autonomous vehicles invention, but sooner or later,、uh, it will be industrialized in automobiles industry. So, I look forward to seeing the outcome of the. Autonomous vehicles market share. Anyway, by using autonomous vehicles, people can can be able to. I mean, can have a self driving systems. So they don't need to drive themselves. They can only just sit down and move place to place. Not only it is limited that, but also. Uh, autonomous vehicles can use for logistics as well. For example, when the when the parcel drivers or other truck truck drivers don't have to drive to move the merchandise, because autonomous vehicle can drive themselves to reach the destination. So therefore, I feel kind of I hi- actually I. Highly expect the autonomous vehicles industry, so I feel really like inter like fascinating. So I I I look forward to、uh, seeing those technologies in future. Okay, great. So. Um, interesting. So they've gone for autonomous vehicles. So the first thing I'm going to pull up is in vocab. So they refer to this as autonomous vehicles, which is okay, which is a correct way to say. But、um, we would normally and naturally say in English, we just call them self-driving cars or self-driving vehicles. Okay. So I would have liked to have seen them use a little bit more paraphrasing in their answer between rather than just always saying autonomous vehicles, being able to paraphrase self-driving cars or autonomous cars or self-driving vehicles. 
it would have helped. But this is this is natural. If I was talking in natural conversation with my friends, I would refer to self-driving cars. So that's just a note. Um, the only other thing to say is that the question is asking you to describe a piece of technology you like to use. So I don't know if this candidate who submitted this actually uses a self-driving car, but it sounded from his answer like he's talking more about the future. He's looking forward to the future of self-driving cars. So this would be a question to the examiner saying, did you fully understand what you read in terms of the question? Did you understand the you like to use part of the phrase? And so if not, you know, that might be something that would hold you back from getting a perfect or a full score. Okay. Um, so that's just something I wanted to deploy. But they used other really good vocabulary in their answer. I like their use of talking about logistics um, and merchandise. Um, in terms of talking about how their self-driving cars are used or autonomous cars are used. Um, I like to note that he used a really good phrase when he talked about when it was invented. This candidate said, um, I'm not sure about when it was invented. Okay. Or I'm not sure about the exact date. Um, so that was a really good, nice hedging phrase to use. It's very natural English. I'm not sure about the exact date or something like that. Um, it's a really good technique to use. If someone asks you a question and you can't really understand what they say. So this is a really good trick to use. If you, if you're in an interview over the internet and the connection isn't very good and they say, and you say, excuse me, could you say that again? And you say, okay, I'm not quite sure um, what you said, but I think what you asked me was, where, what's my favorite park to visit in the summer? So, and then you give your answer. So it's a way of showing that um, you acknowledge that maybe you didn't 100% hear them because of the connection, but you're going to respond on what your best guess of what they said is. Um, so it's a really good phrase, and I would recommend people learning how to say that. Uh, I'm not sure about the exact time. I'm not sure about the exact year. Um, I'm not sure um, the, re the truth of the situation, however, or something like that. So I really liked how, that candidate, how the candidate handled that aspect of it. Um, uh, the only part that I felt like in terms of pronunciation, this candidate was very good. I liked the pronunciation. Um, there weren't any words that I felt were super unclear. Um, the only thing I wanted to pull them up on is slightly is their fluency. Um, in terms of fluency and cohesion and coherence, where I didn't really feel like the answer always made sense. So at the very start of the answer, they were talking about autonomous cars, and then they were talking about the future, and they were talking about market shares. Um, and then they were talking about kind of what they used for, and then kind of again back about the future of, of, of autonomous cars. So I just, their answer to me felt a little bit vague and confusing. Um, I think because they picked this topic, but they didn't really have enough to say about it. You know what I mean? They didn't really have enough detail to pull in. And so they started struggling kind of halfway through the answer. So my advice to this candidate would be um, to read the question a bit more carefully and choose um, an item that they, you actually use on a day-to-day -day basis because I think that would be a little bit easier to talk about or give more information about. Because, um, I mean, even if you run out of things to say about your, your smartwatch, about how you feel about it, you can say things like, I first bought my smartwatch back in 2008. And da -da 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 -da. Um, so I felt that answer was kind of vague. So I would sort of mark them down for clarity and, and cohesion. Um, but overall, I thought it was a reasonable answer, um, a little bit repetitive in terms of the information they gave and a little bit could have improved the vocabulary a little bit. So let's go and look at that part two uh, or rather part three answer rather. So does technology deeply affect people's lives? OK, so that's a sort of a, quite a deep question. And then how should we teach old people to use new technology? <laughs> Makes me think about my grandma. I mean, if, if my grandma, who's like over 90, can learn to use Facebook, then I think most people can. <laughs> so let's listen to see what this candidate has to say. These days, like technology uh, has influenced people's daily life. For example, uh, by using technology, people can be more convenient compared to the past. And to be to elaborate it, people can communicate easily by using the mobile phone. For instance, uh, using the as social network systems like Facebook, Instagram, they are easily interact each other. 
by sending a text or sending the direct message to each other. So it actually a technology is driving new paradigm, driving into new paradigm compared to the past. And uh, in order to teach older generation to use the new technology, probably um, the promotion or the magazine can be helpful in order to yeah in order to in order to notify how to use the technology. Uh, anyway, so within the promotion of new technology, all gener older generation, I mean, adults can learn like fundamentally, fundamentally. So they can, they can, and in addition to that, the elders can have a fusion for new technologies as well. So the old people can learn step by step with the tutors of new technologies. So they will be much easier for adapt a new state of art technology. So and there are there are also other like means of teaching the new technologies like the cyber lectures can be useful as well. And these days due to like the outbreak of COVID nineteen, people cannot like meet each other um cause of the self quarantine. So anyway, so by watching YouTube or other cyber lectures of new technologies will be very useful in order to learn or adapt new technology. Okay, so that was a, a reasonably good answer, pretty solid. Um, I think sort of we'll start with fluency. So obviously, I think you probably heard as we were going along, there was um, pausing and there was a sort of uh, a sort of one long stretch of, of silence um, where they were clearly thinking, which wasn't which wasn't great. And there was also quite a lot of repetition. So they were kind of this candidate was repeating the same ideas over and over. That's one of the problems with IELTS speaking um, is that you're trying to talk about an unfamiliar or very specific topic. When you're trying to think of other things to say, you end up repeating the same idea over and over again. You don't notice it when you're speaking. So I always really recommend to my students to go away, listen to um, their own recording. And that's when you notice how many times you repeat yourself uh, while talking. Um, so this candidate was a little bit repetitive and a sort of word we would use in English was rambling. Okay, it didn't feel like there was a purpose or a point to what they were saying. And they're just sort of talking just to just to fill the silence or just to keep talking. So this is a practice thing. This is practicing lots of different topics. There's only so many questions they can ask you in IELTS, okay? So once you've practiced enough topics, you get better and more concise and more simple in your answers. Uh, and that sort of makes it a bit better and easier to follow. And it makes you sound more fluent if you sound more confident and less rambling. Okay. Pronunciation, um, very good. I have very few um, issues with that pronunciation. Um, it's a little bit blurry because of the quality of the voice recording. Um, but the pronunciation I thought was, was pretty solid. There weren't any words where I wasn't sure what they meant. Uh, in terms of uh, vocabulary, um, again, uh, they could tell they were trying to use words, like they used the word, the new paradigm, which I was kind of impressed at. I'm not sure even that's how you spell paradigm. So <laughs> it's quite a fancy word to use. So I could tell they were trying to use um, better vocabulary. But this led into a couple of grammar issues, which we're going to talk about now. Um, so the first one is they tried to use the word elaborate. So they said using it to elaborate it. Okay, which is which is not correct. So it should be to elaborate, you elaborate, to elaborate on something. Okay, so I'm going to elaborate more on my plans uh, to expand the company. Or that was an interesting presentation. Can you elaborate more on how you will fund this new company that you're going to build? Okay, so you elaborate on something or you are elaborate. Okay, so you can't say to elaborate it. Okay, can you elaborate it? 
No. Can you elaborate on that? Or can you elaborate on that further? Okay, so that's a sort of a grammar point. Um, also, um, this candidate said that people can be more convenient. which is not correct. Okay, I mean, this literally means people as a human species become more convenient. For example, humans have evolved to have a third hand. People can be more convenient. Like, I don't know, like, it doesn't make sense. So um, this technology, um, we can make life more convenient for people. Okay, that's how you should say it. Um, we would never say people can be more convenient, okay? The other grammar issue I'm just going to raise is um, when the, he said they can easily interact each other. We're missing a word. Do you know what word we're missing? It's here. They can easily interact with each other, okay? So we're missing with here, Okay. So that was um, my sort of main few, a couple of grammar points, but I think it's because they're trying to use vocabulary like interact and convenient and elaborate, um, which is sort of making it come across a bit more sort of weaker grammar, which is the danger when you try and use new vocabulary. So mm, why has this come across? Let's get away from markings. Um, okay, so pronunciation I thought was pretty good. I would give a solid six for pronunciation. And what I want to see is a little bit more intonation. Um, the This candidate sounds a little bit robotic and flat at times and still talking about things in the same tone of voice and at the same volume and pitch the whole time. I've said it before with English, English goes up and English goes down. <laughs> it's like, wow, like, oh, that was so interesting. And technology is so amazing. It makes me feel excited when I think about self-driving cars. You know, it's it's more like that. And I know it's embarrassing to do, and I know it feels weird culturally to speak like that, but it, it's just practice. It's just practice. In terms of vocabulary, they made a good attempt um, to use a variety of vocabulary. It was adequate for the task. I was never really blown away by their sort of sophisticated vocabulary again, so I would, again, give that sort of a solid six. In terms of grammatical range and accuracy, it got a little bit weaker in the sort of second question, um, but everything was sort of understandable and there was no point where I couldn't understand what they were saying. So it's it's turning out to be a very sort of solid six. In terms of fluency and coherence, I would give a 5.5. Um, I would say they need to work on sort of speaking more confidently and having more focus to their answers. It's going to sound less rambly, less repetitive. So overall coming out at a solid 6.0. And I think this candidate, I would really recommend that they work on just... Um, practicing and uh, their vocabulary, I think, can get a little bit stronger.